Okay, everybody. Thanks so much for checking out another episode of Uncensored Tacticals videos. This one's going to be on another minimalist wallet, and this is for, of course, some of the core content on UncensoredTactical.com is, well, not some, most of it is around lock picking and entries and bypassing. So I'm going to take my lock picking EDC set and see if we can put that into a new wallet. So first things first, let's pop this open. All right, one of the first things here is it's got a water resistant seal. It's not really for using under water, which I thought was a little funny. Um, so it's a little misleading. Being a Pelican product, you'd think it's, you know, crush proof, break proof, bomb proof. Um, it does have a seal on it, but it's not, um, I don't know if I saw it on their website or somewhere here. Um, it's just a water resistant seal. Okay, yeah, right here. Not for swimming or diving use. IP54 water resistant rating. So not a huge deal. I don't plan on diving with it, but if it's Pelican, usually that name is synonymous with bomb proof and everything proof. Okay, extreme temp, that's good in Florida. Dust proof, don't really care. Crush proof, well, kind of aren't all wallets crush proof because there's just flat stuff in there. Okay, cool, let's pop it open. So the first thing I notice is that these two flaps are both facing down, so when I open it, everything's facing into that seam. So if I have small tools I'm going to put in here, if I hold it up like this, they're going to fall downwards if they fall out. So I can, would I be opening it this way and, eh, I don't know. I've talked to some other people that have owned this and they've said that they've switched these around. So that if you open it, they're both facing one direction or they're both facing, um, instead of facing in like this or facing out. So there's some options there, um, but we're gonna try it anyways. So they got these cool, oh cool, little wrist strap. So they got these nice stretchy areas. Hopefully they'll stay stretchy like that. And let's just see what we can shove in here. So one, I have my uh, searpick.com, their Bogota PI set or Bogota Pi set. I have a Sparrows Hall Pass, I have my Mace Picks, I have, which is not just for sweet luscious locks of hair, a pretty cool makeshift bypass tool. I have a luggage tag from Oscar Delta uh, that serves as a bi-directional bypass tool. You can either use it as, as a shim through or as a latch slip or latch gym tool. Uh, that's uh, mainly it for my tools. Um, we're gonna try and fit all this anywhere if we can. Okay, so I usually have two different IDs that I'll put in. Those have to go in. I try and keep one credit and one debit card. So those will probably go in the same side. Okay, getting kind of yep, getting kind of tough to fit already. I am looking for a minimalist wallet, but I, kinda, I still want to put my important shit in there. Let's see if we can put some tools in the other side. Let's take this nice credit card holder sized lockpick tool set. So the tolerance is really tight here with the width. All right, let's get my quick bypass tool. Oh boy. Still tight. This won't be a problem. Done. These guys are going to be special. I really do like these Sparrows lock picks, mace picks. Uh, where the hell are they going to go so that they don't fall out? Um, there is a method. I don't love using it because it requires some tape, but there is a method where you take these and tape them flat behind some type of card for storage. Um, we're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to pick a card and I'm going to tape them to the back and then we're going to move forward. Okay. So I took a mimic of my, a mimic of one of my IDs. So just something that I take out very infrequently and on the back, I just taped these three tools and there should be plenty of room to slide that in the bottom of that stack. Okay. looks like we're good. And that looks like we have, uh, what do we have left? Just some cash and if you remember the last wallet we reviewed the TAD minimalist wallet we could barely get three bills tucked in there so this one we're just gonna put these right 
in front of our pick set. And it looks like it's too high. All right, now for the big question. Okay, well, it's, it's shut, but oh boy, is it's kind of kind of bulging at the seams here. So, oh, geez. So what we can, I'm going to scoot that over a little bit. Take that height out. Scoot those to one side. Uh, all right, still might be limited on the cash problem. Let's try just three bills. And that all fit in there. It just didn't fit great. So if I'm not super worried about the waterproofness, um, okay, yeah, that looks a lot better. So it looks like this seal is kind of free floating, kind of near where the seam would be. Um, but in the beginning, it said it's water resistant. It's not even designed to be waterproof for swimming or diving. So as long as you understand what you have here, and if you don't buy it for being waterproof, you just it'll keep your stuff kind of dry, kind of like any wallet would. Um, I like that it's all one case. I like that it's it's slim. Uh, it's got a little more bulk to it, but a little more bulk than our last minimalist wallet. But I don't think this one will be bending my credit cards. So I this will be a part one again. I'm really interested in doing some short-term, medium-term, long-term reviews on products and tools. So for now, this will be what I'm carrying, and I will absolutely keep you guys updated. Please subscribe on the YouTube channel to see more updates and more lockpicking videos, and go over to insurgencyknittingcircle.com if you want to jump onto our Discord, where I'm at every single day, um, along with the other co-hosts at the Insurgency Knitting Circle podcast. And thank you so much for spending some time with us. It means a lot to me. And feel free to drop some comments. I try very hard to respond to almost all of them. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.